Today, you're going to bemify your CSS, whatever that means. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna to be talking about BEM or the block element modifier approach to writing HTML and CSS. Now you may have seen it in CodePen, for example, in, your CS, in the CSS and the HTML, these weird double underscores and the double dashes. And you're probably thinking, is that auto-generated or something? And no, it's basically people who are following the BEM I, uh, methodology to writing their HTML and CSS. So if you check out uh, this em.bem.info on the main site, it'll tell you and give you more information about what exactly this is. But in a nutshell, basically, if you're dealing with a project that is a serious project that has multiple pages and a bunch of uh, rule sets and HTML selectors, it can be difficult maintaining that code and writing that code because you can run into issues of what's called specificity and you maybe perhaps you're changing CSS in one area of the app, but somehow it starts affecting another area and it becomes kind of confusing on how to deal with it. Well, that's one of the several advantages to using the BEM method because it helps avoid issues like that as much as possible. So initially I'm gonna go through a few slides here just to give you a, a real broad understanding of what it is. And then we're gonna hop into the code and then it should really come full circle. And again, this is really aimed at beginners. I really wanna get into more, you know, more in depth tops, topics as it pertains to BEM, uh, but we'll save that for the future. So for now, this is just real beginner level stuff. You should have no problem understanding it. Now as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website, your portfolio, your online store, and more on whatever technology stack you use. Getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal. With back-end access to your server, customization and scaling options are all but limitless. If you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. So first we're going to look just very quickly, I know you guys hate slides and all, a couple slides that I made in Adobe XD to give a, a real quick overview of what BEM or BEM is and what it really stands for. So of course it stands for block first for the B, and that's a standalone entity that is a meaningful on its own. And these, these definitions of these three elements come straight from BEM itself or the official documentation. Um, element, of course, is the E, and that's a part of a block that has no standalone meaning and is semantically tied to its own block. All right, so this, all, this stuff's all gonna make sense here shortly though. Um, and M modifier is a flag on a blocker element and you use them to change the appearance or behavior of either blocks or elements, all right? Makes sense, probably not at this point, but that's expected. So let's just take an example of this quick card. And by the way, we'll be doing an actual card, uh, although it's gonna be set up differently, a little bit more complex than this, in HTML and CSS uh, after this, these slides here. So here's a basic card, and we have to ask ourselves, you know, what is a block in this card? What is an element and what is a modifier? So first, let's take a look at what might be a block. So the block itself is the card, all right? And we can name that block whatever we want, whatever makes sense, card, right? It's a card, duh, all right? So what would this photograph be? Well, it's an element because it's gonna be inside of that block and it's tied semantically to this block element. And the way you designate what an element is is based on the block class card name. So this is the card. And then you do two underscores and then the name of the element. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. And it will, if you keep watching, you better not leave. All right. And then what would this title be right here? This would be like an H1 element, for instance. All right. That's going to be an element as well, because it's an element. It's, it's semantically tied to this card. All right. So it's going to be card underscore underscore. It's kind of hard to see the two underscores here but there's two underscores and then title, all right? Next, same thing with the, the paragraph right here. It's an element, so card, underscore, underscore, description. And then also we have two things happening here with this button, all right? It's an element, so a card, hyphen, hyphen, it's a button, so we're gonna give it a card button. And it's also a modifier that I've optionally attached to it to make it a certain color because perhaps there's multiple cards and maybe there's an active color card with an active button, right? So the way you, 
you designate that being that it's a modifier is you do a uh, it could this could either be tied to a block or an element in this case it's tied to the element of card button so we do the element name and this time not two underscores they're rather two dashes along with the appropriate name that you want to give it whatever makes sense whatever is relevant in this case it would be active making it in an active button all right so hopefully that makes sense for instance i just to to expand a little bit more on the modifier idea like I said, it could be a tie. You can have a modifier a tied to a block and an element or an element. So in a case, let's say for instance, we had we wanted to have an active card, maybe with a border around it. Well, we could have ta attached a modifier to this element, and so it would be class equals card space, and then card hyphen hyphen active. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and step into actual code to make this stuff really come full circle and do our own example from scratch. Okay, so here I have open Visual Studio code. We have an index.html with no uh, markup here. We're linking to a CSS main.css file. I'm using SAS for this, by the way, which I've already ran with the SAS live compilation extension, which you can install over here if you wish. Um, and I'm gonna use SAS just to show you the SAS way of dealing with BEM or BEM. And I only have these two rule sets here just to uh, you know, put a, a basic background font and also display grid to put our card in the center vertically and horizontally over here. All right, so we're gonna go over here to, wait, how did that change? I think I changed the, the color by accident. All right, there we go. So this is over here is our preview of what's happening in the browser. So we're going to create the standard markup, not the BEM way, of just creating a, a card HTML write up um, and so what I'm going to do is first write it normally how I would um, and then I'll do it the BEM way now a quick uh, side note if for example we are our, our project here was a real project but it only included just a card like it's the world's most simple landing page and project we wouldn't need to use the BEM method because it wouldn't make sense it's so freaking simple we're not going to run into the issues uh, that you would face uh, with like a large project or a medium-sized project. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're dealing with an ultra, ultra, ultra simple project, you don't have to use this methodology. All right, so we're gonna start off here with uh, a class of card, all right? And this is actually consistent with the BEM way, even though we just have one um, element so far. So this would be our block. Now, next up, I'm gonna have like an image, just like in our little slide example. I'm not gonna use an actual image though. I'm just going to put in a span like that, all right? And again, this is not the BEM way. We're gonna BEMify it shortly. Um, we'll also have uh, a whole container to hold all of our type-based content to give it padding. So I'll call that, uh, we'll just call it content in, in the form of a div. Next up, we'll have maybe some breadcrumbs, like a little navigation. So we'll say UL, LI, and then we'll say, I don't know, maybe this is listing out software titles or something. So this is Adobe XD, this one will be Figma, and this one will be Sketch. All right, and then perhaps we'll have a description. So we'll say P, and we will say Lorem 20, just for 20 words of lorem ipsum generated text. And then also maybe a button, so ahref, and we'll say visit the link or something. All right, so we'll save this, and this is not the BEM way of doing it. This would not be correct. Um, but again, if this were my only HTML in CSS that's not gonna be a part of this project, I would reference it just like this because it's, 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 it, there's less code here to deal with and it's much easier. We're not gonna run into issues of specificity and all of that stuff. I can never say it right, specificity, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and do this the BEM way. So we know first our block is the overall container of our card. So this is what we're deciding to name it, and this is the correct way of dealing with the block element when you're using the BEM approach. Next up, we have an image. In this case, we're not using an image, we're just gonna use the span element. So this is an element of, as a part of the BEM process because it's an element of card. It's semantically tied to the card block. So if you recall from the slides, we gave it a class of card 
and then it's an element, so it's two underscores, and then the name of it. And in our case, we're going to name it maybe image, IMG for something like that. Next up, this is going to be this, this whole div class of content. It's semantically, semantically tied to this card. So we're going to rename this to card underscore content. All right. Next up, we have this unordered list in the form of it's going to look kind of like little breadcrumb tags, if you will. So this is also a part of the card. It's semantically tied to the card. So we're going to say class equals card underscore underscore list. We also do this with the list items. So this is going to be class equals card underscore underscore item because it's an item in the card. And then for this one, actually, we're going to leave that there for a second. We're going to change it. So these are all both given card items as well. All right. Now, let's say we wanted the Adobe XD to be highlighted. Maybe that's the current uh, software title that this particular blog post or whatever is about. So we give this a modifier, right? BEM modifier. So we do that by saying card hyphen hyphen item, which is what it's on. And it's an element, <clears throat> sorry. It's, it's, a, it's a modifier that is modifying an element in this case. So we give the element name, element name and then hyphen hyphen because it's an element or a modifier rather. And then we'll say active. All right, next up we have, let me hit control B to get rid of that sidebar. Uh, we have this description card hyphen hyphen DESC. And then also a class of card hyphen hyphen link. I guess we could call it, you could call it button, you know, whatever, or CTA for call to action. And there is the BEM way of writing this. Now there's several different schools of thought when it comes to BEM. And you know, some people would say maybe some things could be changed about this, but in a nutshell, this is the approach to writing BEM in HTML. Now, of course, how do we reference all this stuff in CSS itself? Well, it depends. I, are you going to be writing in a straight up CSS file with a CSS extension, or are you going to be using a, a process preprocessor like SAS or something like that? So SAS can make your life a little bit easier. And I'll show you the SAS way of doing this and also what SAS ends up producing from um, compiling or transpiling down to the regular CSS file. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to reference our block level element first, and that is the card. All right, so we're going to give this just a padding of zero on the top and bottom and 5 EM on the right and left, just to push it away from the corner of the browser there. Then we're going to use the SAS ampersand right here to append onto it our next element, which is underscore underscore image or IMG. So what this will ultimately do, and I'll show you in the output CSS, is it takes this ampersand will take the card name right here and just put it as a prefix onto image. So it's just a shorthand method. That way you don't have to manually write out card. All right, so an image for the image, we'll just go ahead and say display block. We're going to say um, height of 100 pixels width 100%. And background, I'm going to give it a custom background here. It's kind of um, like a pinkish sort of hex code. And we'll save it. There we go. So after saving this, let's check the actual main.css. We'll see what it produces. So that and that the ampersand sign is producing this rule set right here in the regular CSS. All right. So next up after that, we have our card content. So let's go back to our SAS here. So we'll do the same thing. And uh, we'll have content. We'll give the content a little bit of padding inside and we'll say background white. All right, there we go. It's coming along, guys. Very exciting stuff. Um, underscored list here. So we'll stay for the list, list style type is none. We'll say display flex, make it a flex box. So you do that automatically makes them left or realign to each other and margin zero, padding zero. Good stuff. 
the list items themselves. So we're gonna say an item, because remember the names here are card item. So again, it's going back to the ampersand means whatever is specified here in this parent. So card item would be, uh, we'll say padding is 0.3 EM and 0.5 EM. And then we'll say margin right, 0.5 EM background. We're gonna make it slightly gray, not this gray though, a little bit too much uh, contrast there. There we go. And then we'll also say border radius. We're just about done here, 0.3 M. Font size will be 0.85 EM. All right. Next up after that, we're going to nest inside of here the modifier. Because if you recall, the modifier is card item hyphen active. So to do that, we'll say and. Oops, it's not, it's, sorry, it was too, it was not two underscores like I was about to do. It's hyphen hyphen because it's a modifier active. And then we'll just say background D4, 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 and then font weight bold. Notice how it changes that, just makes it slightly darker than the rest. Arguably, arguably, I could, arguably, I could probably make that a little bit darker, but, but no big deal. You can see that it's active from, from being bold. Um, and then finally, we have uh, our, uh, let's see, our link. We have a description, but I think the description looks good on its own, so I'm not even gonna reference that. So we just put here our next element, which is link. And for this next one, I'm going to paste in the rule sets, quite a bit of them, because there's nothing really too exciting happening here. So there's the link. What if we wanted to make it hover? I uh, change color on hover rather. Very simple, same thing background and I'll give that a color code as well and there we go all right so looking at this this is our CSS written in the BEM way and here's the HTML so if you were dealing with a larger project that had this block element as a part of it and you had some other classes and perhaps you had cards in a different page that are styled maybe slightly differently or you're using some other classes that exist in other areas and you start to change uh, your CSS maybe at different times during the project and then all of a sudden things are changing in other areas of the app that you don't want it to. Well, this is what helps ultimately for you to avoid that situation. So let's take a look at the compiled CSS. It's actually really simple. Just like that. All right. All right, so hopefully now you have a real basic understanding of what BEM is. Of course, there's a lot of other uh, resources and other topics that are pertinent to it. And if you start building a site using BEM, you probably will come up with other questions that of course weren't answered here. Um, so you can always check out their forums uh, where you can post your questions and also find, you know, of course, always Google it. Uh, and you'll be well on your way to, to understanding it as, lo as long as you're active and proactive and researching and keep on using it. You know, it's all about experience and trial and error. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.